Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today what I'm going to do is that continuing from the last uh, video, which I successfully created a plot and uh, the arrows between each of the node in a multi-layer perceptron, what I'm going to do today is actually build a neural network to be able to fit the, the canvas and the structure that we have. So I'm going back to Keras and, uh, Keras and TensorFlow and you can watch some video that I have in the past to on how to properly install them and you can get those video in the video description down below. Okay, so this neural network has to do two things. It has to be very, very reproducible. It has to be very small so that everyone will be able to train and it has to have a curve that doesn't immediately converge. Otherwise, there's no animation to do, to, to say. Okay, so I have uh, successfully create some kind of thing where you have a slowly increasing accuracy and a slowly decreasing loss. So this is what I want. So, um, so these are the codes on how I do it. So first of all, I write two functions. First of all, is to normalize the data from uh, whatever data that comes in into zero and one. It's called min max normalization. And I, I have another one that copy the data set over itself so that instead of a small data set, I'm, I'm creating a huge data set. You see how, what I meant later on. So first of all, is to create the data set. Here, we're using something called Iris data set, which is incredibly popular in all the machine learning tutorial because it is so easy to classify them and it's so small and the data set is so good that it's very easy for any kind of machine learning uh, algorithm to work. So I've been using that because I'm also very familiar with that. So what I'm going to do is first of all, separate the column one to four uh, into the input. So that's the train data, change the dimension and do it as a list because originally it's a data frame and Keras doesn't like data frame. And what I'm gonna do next is to scale them and normalize them so that they have like a proper scaling and everything is between zero and one. And lastly, I'm gonna do a copy data. So what copy data intend to do is one over five is to take the original data and double it up so that the first time it get twice a bit, four times a bit, um, five, three, sorry, yeah, four, eight, and that I think I believe it's to the power of five over here to the original data set. So it's or the original data set times something like two to the power of five. So I get instead of 150 lines, I get 4,800 lines. So why do I need to do that? Because in if your every epoch is very small, the, the, the machine learning back population get very confused and they don't really understand how to properly structure the weight and the notes. So having a bigger data set, give it a little bit more perception, a little bit more time to look through all the data set again and again and again. And, and it will actually create a better training algorithm. And you have more data that you possibly want to do that as well. Otherwise, you know, the batch size is too small and everything become very confusing. Okay. So the next one is, um, very, very straightforward where we change the column, column five, which is currently the, the species of the flower into a, a factor. And then I do a S numeric as an S matrix because again, they don't like data frame. Matrix works a lot better. And I do a train label equals train label minus one because originally if you convert them into a numeric as factors from, so from factor, you convert them into a numeric, it will become one, two, and three. And when you do machine learning, they usually like to start from zero because you know, remember Keras and TensorFlow is still Python based. So you have to convert one, two, three to zero, one, and two for your two categorical to work. Okay. So now we have zero, one, two. We can convert the train label now into three classes and that will convert that into a train label using one hot encoding. And you can have a look. It's like that. So this is the first species. This is the second species down here. And this is the third species on the right. So instead of uh, one, two, zero, one, two, they actually separate the thing into three columns. Uh, because zero and one is a lot easier for machine learning to understand, or the, at least for this data structure, sorry, this uh, machine learning architecture to understand what to do with it. Because end of the day, you want three nodes as output. Okay, so what we do is that again, we're gonna do the train label and we do a copy data. So we trans, so we duplicate the original data from 550 to 4,800. Okay, so I'm gonna first of all remove the model because every time I rerun it, I wanna make sure that it doesn't stack onto itself. So I always remove the model before I mute the model. And the model will be built from uh, all the dense layer. And all the dense layer, if you don't understand, it's just the normal machine learning layer and one, two, three, four, five. And every time you add a layer, uh, you have to add a line basically. So how many nodes, units or nodes is in each layer will be based on the array, which is actually we built up here, here. Okay. So we're doing one with four, six, eight, six, three. 
and four represent the input and three represent the output. So you can see that this has four in the input and then we also have array one, two, oh sorry, uh, four doesn't represent the input. The input is an, is, a, is a one in front of it. I also have a four, six, eight something and then the output has to be three because remember our train level, train label, our output is in three categorical data. Okay, so the input has to be four, the output has to be three, everything in the middle can depends on how you want to design, big or small, completely up to you. And how many layers is also very dependent on what your data set is and how many layers do you think you want. Okay, just sometimes that it doesn't actually, uh, so sometimes a bigger layer doesn't mean a better layer. So just, 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 just have that in mind. Okay, so we can inspect the, the thing that we have just now, like that with a model summary. Where we have three as an input, it passed to a five, passed to a nine, passed to a three, and passed to a three again. Of course, all these numbers are, are changeable and all these numbers you can manipulate based on whatever input that you want. This just happens to work well for me. Okay, so you can also change the sigmoid to a ralu if you want, but with multiple layers of it, usually I use sigmoid or 10H, uh, usually it will be, it, it, for me, it creates a better result, but it, it really depends on how to you. Okay, so the last one, if you are using my multiple categorical classification, it's almost always soft max, because, you know, it's sharper and it's able to distinguish zero and one better than sigmoid. And then for, because it's a soft max and categorical layer, sorry, categorical classification, we also almost we use categorical press entropy and we're gonna base our metrics based on the accuracy of how many times it has properly classified all the data that we have. Okay, so optimizer, uh, I'm using RMS prop, but you can try to use the other like Adam is SGD. They, they are very similar and I use RMS here because it, it creates a nicer uh, training curve for me for the animation purpose and you can feel free to change it around for whatever you need to do. So once we define all the proper parameter, we just go for model fit and training to fit X to Y, okay? And the model will take in whatever is in the middle and you will run it, okay? I'm running 30 epochs, um, not because it convert, because it converts around 15 as you can see. I'm just running it a bit longer so I can train it down later for my animation. That's no issue at all. And I, I'm gonna make sure that uh, if I can, I'm gonna further optimize this to have a much nicer curve instead of this two-step situation over there. Uh, in fact, the curve actually changes every time I run it. Slightly different because uh, because machine learning are based on a random number to begin with, and every time they backpropagate, the the factors also gonna change a little bit from one to another. Okay, so I'm gonna try thirty all the time, and I'm gonna do a cutoff before I go for my animation. I'm gonna use multi processing because I have four CPU cores, and I have used a batch size of thirty because again, this gives me a nicer training curve. It doesn't immediately converge or never converge or converge too slow. So we want to have a lot of action in the beginning. By the end of the video, it's if there's no action, it's not that important. I can trim the video down as well. And I'm going to plot the history. And you can see this is my training curve. So basically, my neural network has been properly assigned, properly, uh, what do you call? Um, so I, I'm done with my neural network. So what I need to do next is to extract the weight and the bias. So for, for those that are new here, a weight refers to the arrow between the node to the node from, from one layer to another. You have to times every value with a weight. And every node itself has a bias that you have to add. You know, y equals mx plus c. So every layer has a, has a constant you're adding to that node to make it more important or less important, it depends on what you want to do with it. Okay, so that refers as, so the arrow, the arrow is the weight and the node is the bias. And what I need to do now is to extract the weight and bias for each of the nodes and each of the arrow and try to pipe it to my, and try to pipe it to my animation script in the beginning. So that will be it for this week. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll get this done soon. Bye.